our movies, we get executed. How are you doing? Today we're talking about this small rig shoulder rig. F <laughs> Too many rigs. Hi, wait. <laughs> How are we doing? I'm Zach Mayfield, and today we're talking about this affordable, cute little shoulder rig that I made for my Sony a7S III, but obviously it can work with pretty much any camera. So I really like shoulder rigs. I think they're fun. I love the results I can get from them. So the goal is to maybe inspire you guys to check out a piece of this rig or or just, just follow along for a good time. So with most mirrorless cameras, a lot of us experience micro jitters, which is those tiny little shakes when we're shooting handheld. And handheld is... <laughs> <laughs> handheld is my favorite way of shooting. I just love the energy. But what's cool about the shoulder rig is you can get that same feel, that same energy as handheld, but it takes away the micro jitters from smaller cameras. And then you don't have to worry about using IBIS and stuff like that. Small rig was kind enough to send me most of the parts to build this rig out. So huge thank you to them. Also, our friends at h &Y sent me this little amazing filter that we'll get to at the end of the video. So. Technically, this video is sponsored by Small Rig and H&Y, but there's not gonna be any goofy ad in the middle of the video. We're just talking about the parts of this rig. We're gonna have a good time. So let's start with the actual shoulder rig itself, and then we'll get into the fun little camera gizmos at the end. But we gotta talk about one thing first that pretty much nobody on YouTube mentions when it comes to shoulder rigs, and that's actually having dummy thick shoulders. Now, this does take years in a gym, but one thing you can do is just have a dumbbell by your side, pretty much all hours of the day. And then whenever you get a chance, you just wanna do 10 to 12 reps, make sure your elbow is slightly bent. And the goal is really to just build up dummy thick, fat jack shoulders. If you have meaty shoulders, then you can kind of tense them up to get really stable shots, or you can loosen them up and get that nice handheld fluidity. It gives you options. Okay, you obviously don't need jacked shoulders to have a shoulder rig. That's why we look at the first and one of the most important parts of the shoulder rig, the pad. So this is the universal shoulder pad from Small Rig, obviously. What's nice about it is it's affordable and it's pretty relatively cozy. It's got a nice little bit of cushion here and plenty of mounting points on the top so you can have these rods coming out and also have a little mounting plate, which we'll get to towards the end. Okay, so the next thing are these carbon fiber rods. They're 15 millimeters, which is standard for pretty much all rods. So these are coming out of the shoulder pad via this built-in mount. And the thing you wanna be careful with with these rods is to not get ones that are too long because then they'll show up in your shot. I would recommend nine inches or something a little chodier, like six inches. Um, that way, if you're using wide lenses, the rods aren't gonna show up in your footage. So now we're talking about <laughs> one of the more expensive parts of the rig, which is the handle kit. This is the small rig, I think it's 2002, what the frick is it called? Shoulder Rig Handle Kit 2002. The reason why I went with a little bit more pricey handles is because this is where all your stability is coming from when you're getting your shots. So you wanna have something very sturdy. And what's nice is these rods are kind of angled out so that you get a wide grip. If your handles are too close, the camera can kind of tilt back and forth. So you want a nice wide grip. These are really good quality with these rosette mounting screw clamp thingy majiggies. And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. You can get cheaper ones if you want, but I really like these. They feel really great and I have sweaty hands. And they still do a good job. So coming out of this handle kit is this random ass magic arm that I have. I honestly don't know if it's small rig or not. I've had it for a long time. So I just have a magic arm mounted to my Atomos Ninja 5. So I just have this top and bottom mounting point. They have natto rails, a safety release here. And then also this side has an HDMI lock, which is nice. Keeps my little Gerald undone cable nice and safe. Got an HDMI clamp on the cage as well. I realized I could have done a universal battery kit for this thing and run everything off of one battery, but these NPF style batteries run forever and the internal A7S III battery also does a really good job. So it's just two batteries and I don't mind having my rig a little bit lighter to sacrifice like a smidge of time. So now we're gonna get real nerdy and talk about mounting plates and all that kind of stuff. I'm such a nerd for this stuff. So this is the Arca mounting plate 2144, I believe it's called. And I'll have links to all the pieces of gear. Literally everything I'm talking about will be in the description or the pinned comment, haven't decided yet. What I love about this little Arca mounting plate thing is it's a little pull out release. And then you can see the most beautiful purchase I've made in the last year and a half, which is the Peak Design dual plate. 
So this works with like my switch pod, my ball heads, my travel tripod. I love this plate. It's like the best $25 I've spent in a long time. The beauty of the quick release system is I can take this camera off and microscopically turn it down into a handheld rig, which is just so much fun. So let me just show you really quick. I'm gonna take off the HDMI cable. Sorry, Gerald. Here is just the base camera setup. It's very small, which I like. And then I'm also just gonna take off my Ninja, wiggle this around. Look how professional this looks. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so on my camera is the small rig A7S III cage. It has this natto rail on top, HDMI clamp on the side. And then I have this beautiful cheesy handle that has this monitor mount attached to the front of it via these two little quarter 20 bolts, which is great. And then I just slide this baby onto this natto rail. Oh my God. Tighten it up. This little monitor mount, which is just so nice, it has its own little screw bolt. Screw it into the base of the Ninja 5 because we have the small rig base plate on the Ninja. So that is now secure and ready to go. And do a little... <laughs> Connor just ran into the light stand and that's just, that's just part of how we do things around here. We can take our cable, plug it in, get some Gerald juice in there. And now we have this beautiful little handheld rig. Might need a battery. See, there's another good reason for not having the whole battery system, because I can just keep it modular, baby. I'm thinking ahead. So now we have this great little handheld system. I can do my little zoomy zooms. I have ND on here, which we'll talk about, and a nice monitor slash recorder. And this is just so good if you want to be really discreet or you're like trying to keep your camera like at your side to not draw too much attention. I love this setup with the Sigma 24 to 70, the Ninja, the A7S III, dude. I just get so nerdy for this. It makes me happy. So I gotta mention this beautiful filter from H&Y. Thank you for sending this to us. This is a Black Mist 1 8 filter. And the beauty of the H&Y system is it's all magnetic and modular. So you can just slap on some Pro Mist if you want it, which I love shooting with. So this is now a variable ND filter from, I think it's two to five stops. It's a circular polarizer and a freaking Pro Mist, Black Mist thing. I mean, what more could you want in this sweet life? The beauty of the H&Y Variable ND is it has this little screw-on clamp system. Wait, god damn it. <laughs> oh, I can't figure it out right now. I just did this. So the beauty of the H&Y system is it has this little quick release system. There's no more screwing filters on. You just do this and then put it on the inside of your filter thread, let go, give it a little adjustment, and now it's just totally ready to go. It's totally secure. And using these little dials here, you can adjust your variable ND and your circular polarizer to work with reflections. So everything you need is just built into this filter and no more getting freaking screw on filters stuck to my lenses because that I've run into that issue quite a bit. So I know I'm gonna get questions about exactly what I'm using here. So I'll run through it really quickly. So obviously Sony a7S III, Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens. I love this thing. H&Y Variable ND and Black Mist and Polarizer. And then I'm using the Angelbird V90 128 gig SD cards. Got two of them in there. If you're using heavy-ish lenses, you're definitely gonna want a lens support. This is the Small Rig Universal Lens Support. It just attaches to your 15 millimeter rods and you have this little adjustment here to go up to your lens. The thing you have to be sure of though is that you want your camera to be perfectly centered so that your lens sits perfectly on this mount here. So basically you wanna make sure your camera plate is centered on your cage. So that once you put it in like this, give it a little, uh, little tidy tightness like that. And then it is all supported and you're not putting any pressure on the mount of your camera. Oh shit. Shit. <laughs> Another thing I really like with the Sigma 1835, frick, I said 1835, this is the 24 to 70. That is burned into my brain, holy shit. I can still do my little zoomies on here while filming and having stability with my left hand. So I can just look at you, Connor, get a nice little zoom on you. And the autofocus is good enough on this camera and lens that it looks good. Makes me feel like I'm filming like an episode of Parks and Rec. I think that's why I like it so much. So I can just like... <laughs> the crash zoom. Yeah, the crash zooms are just, so great. Well, the real question is, is my Fuji more stable than your shoulder rig? So which one did you like better? The Fuji X-T4 with 
Connor's really cool IBIS and stuff, or the Sony a7S III on a shoulder rig. Ouch. They're definitely different, so it's not like a perfect comparison, but it's fun. It's fun to do this kind of stuff. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you want, or don't, don't really care. Just glad that you're here. Check out my Discord server, the Zachy May fam. We're over 500 members now, and people are just having these creative chats, sharing work, sharing feedback. It's been really cool just getting to know a lot of different people from all over the freaking world in there. It's been really awesome. And as always, text me when you get home. I gotta be knowing if you're safe. I've been worrying about you. I think you're, you're a great person, and I just wanna know, like, did you get home safe? So. Shoot me a text and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.